Well, it turns out that there is another very important uh, permaculture plant, uh, particularly for the tropics. Howdy everybody, I'm back with another video and I'm, I'm standing up here uh, kind of in the middle of the farm in the exact same place where I was uh, a little maybe six weeks ago when I made another video about the changing weather of, of, uh, of Nicaragua and I wanted to show you just how different it is that in in a month how drastically things can change here so let me do that now you re may remember in the other video behind me everything was dead and look at this look how lush this is in just a month the month of June created this. You can actually see some dead grass right up there that's left over uh, from, the, from the dry season. But look at how there's just been this explosion of green and, uh, uh, gra and uh, biomass, just an explosion of biomass here. Uh, here we have the mangosteen, our good friend, the mangosteen tree, and you can see that the the work that we did down there is still still working quite well. Now here I am a little bit uh, lower on the farm, and I wanted to mention uh, in a previ previous video I talked quite a bit about polarding, polarding, uh, and I mentioned a very important permaculture tree called Gliricidia sepium. Okay. Well, it turns out that there is another very important uh, permaculture plant, uh, particularly for the tropics, and that's the title of this video. And the name of that plant is Tithonia diversifolia. Tithonia diversifolia. Now, this is known as Mexican sunflower, it's known as the Caribbean marigold. Uh, it has many different names, but, uh, but its scientific name is Tithonia diversifolia. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Now here we are in another crop circle that I, uh, I dug, I don't know, about two months ago around uh, around a citrus tree that wasn't doing so well and it's it's starting to uh, jump back up again now uh, and you can see the amount of of biomass that has grown up around this it, it just is really incredible how fast it happens but right next to it is this plant right here Tithonia diversifolia now uh, Tithonia diversifolia is a, is a very interesting plant because it really is the comfrey of the tropics. Now, for those of you in permaculture, you'll know a lot about comfrey. You hear about comfrey all the time. Comfrey this, comfrey that, how great it is. Tithonia diversifolia is every bit as powerful a tool as uh, as comfrey. And why is that? Because it accumulates, it has very deep taproot, it accumulates a lot of material in its leaves and in its stem. And so this plant will grow much taller. It will grow, it could be as much as uh, seven or eight feet tall when it gets uh, mature. But we're not going to allow it to get mature because when it, when it gets mature, it, it is more like a sunflower. The stem gets very, uh, very thick and very uh, dense. Uh, 
and, and that doesn't break down very well. But if we take these uh, young tithonias here with these, this, this young stem here, I'm trying to get a, get a good, good look at it, with that young stem and cut that. This is actually a little too young. And here's a, here's a little flower here trying to come out. Usually they don't flower this early. But uh, if, we, if we chop this, if we chop it and put it over here on the, uh, on the crop circle, this will provide a lot of very uh, powerful uh, fertilizer to this uh, citrus tree. Uh, one of the most powerful things it will do is it'll provide a lot of phosphorus. And those of you who study these things or those of you in permaculture know that there aren't many plants that accumulate phosphorus. There's just a few, there's just a few that are known to be phosphorus accumulators. Tithonia is one of them. Now, there's another tithonia right over here. Here's another crop circle around another somewhat older citrus. This is this one's a little bit farther farther along than the other. Uh, and and as you can see, the the stem is still green. It's it's very uh, very easy to cut, uh, and it and it uh, it will uh, decompose very quickly. It doesn't take long for it to be, uh, de it's like comfrey in that respect. Comfrey, you cut comfrey, and in two days, it's like it's gone uh, because it decomposes so fast. So, so that's another thing about tithonia. Now, some interesting things about tithonia, if you look it up in Wikipedia or, or some other book, they're going to tell you that it's an incredibly invasive species. And that's because, like most sunflowers, it produces a lot of seeds. Uh, tithonia is unique in that it behaves, it, it behaves somewhat like an animal in, in, in that it produces seeds every year. Uh, but it also behaves like a perennial. So it keeps coming back up. And that's because it's capable, under certain condi conditions, of vegetative propagation. So in other words, cloning itself. And that's not producing uh, seeds, it's just simply producing another plant from, from the root system or from the stem of, of an already existing plant. And one of the ways to, to encourage that, uh, that vegetative uh, propagation is to cut it before it's ready to reproduce. So you cut it and it says, oh my God, I, I'm not going to be able to reproduce. So it sends up a couple more clones saying, oh, maybe this will improve my chances. So, uh, so that's one of the things that you can do. Now, as you see, there's tithonia all over this. This is all over the berm, the berm part of the, uh, of the crop circle that I dug here. And that's another feature of tithonia. And that's that it likes to colonize disturbed land. Uh, it, it grows very easily because it doesn't need a lot of nutrients uh, in the soil. It kind of finds the nutrients itself and, uh, and takes advantage of that. So we have it uh, in quite a few places here on the farm. Uh, a lot of people want to try to control it and, uh, and, and, and what have you. Uh, we don't try to control it at all. Now let me just move over to another section. Now these are even larger. These are even larger examples of Tithonia diversifolia. And let me 
see if I can get a look at the stem of this one in here. Again, this is, this is a good time to cut it. Uh, where it is kind of right now. It's about a meter tall. And if we let it go too much longer than this, the stem is going to start getting uh, lignified, meaning that it's going to get stringy and more like a woody, more like a woody stem. It won't be an actual woody stem, but it will be kind of like a, a, a pseudo woody stem. And that is not as easy to uh, decompose. And, and it's, it doesn't have in the stem, it doesn't have as much nutrient in there anymore. It's getting ready to put all of its energy into producing the flower. Now what I said at the beginning, uh, comfrey is, is not a tropical plant. I suppose you could probably try to grow it down here and maybe you'd succeed if you uh, found like a microclimate that would sustain it or something like that. But, but normally it doesn't grow in the tropics. Whereas Tithonia diversifolia does. And it actually grows all over the United States as well. So it, it, it does okay in temperate regions, but it does really well in the tropics. And that's why I said it's, a, it's, it's the tropical counterpart to comfrey in, in permaculture. Uh, loaded with nitrogen, loaded with potassium, NPK, and most importantly, loaded with phosphorus and and so if you could get your hands on some you just have to uh, be careful and uh, not allow it to get out of control and you can do that fairly easily by <coughs> by continuously cutting it uh, so that it doesn't have a chance to uh, reproduce so uh, I guess I'll leave it at that, and uh, if you find these videos to be beneficial to you, uh, and if you find the, the channel uh, to be interesting and, and beneficial to you, please uh, click the like button and click the subscribe button. That helps me to keep going. Uh, it lets me know that people are interested. It also lets YouTube know that people are interested. So that helps me out. So I appreciate that very much. So uh, with that, I'll see you in the next video.